Welcome to Vive Talk. Today we are talking about VR time machines. Time is a strange thing. It is a metric devised by humans. The calendar is simply a point of agreement and consensus. A year is comprised of 12 months, 365 days, 24 hours per day, 60 minutes per hour, and 60 seconds per minute. This is just all agreed units. However, when applied to space and other planets, the time scale cannot be used in its entirety. After all, the time for each planet to revolve is different. Time is both a real and illusory concept. Carlo Rovelli, a theoretical physicist, accurately described this in his book, The Order of Time. The difference between past and future, between cause and effect, between memory and hope, between regret and intention. In the elementary laws that describe the mechanisms of the world, there is no such difference. Although time is only meaningful in biology, what humans strive for throughout their lives is to transcend biology. The human desire to transcend life and death is reflected in the limitation of time on us. Anyone who has seen the popular Netflix series Dark may think, who just overclocked my brain? At the complicated relationship between the characters and the timeline. To quote the series, time is always with you, wherever you go. You carry it within you, and it carries you. It sees and hears everything you do and say. Tick tock. The depiction of time in Dark is quite intriguing. When it comes to time travel, science fiction either strictly adheres to causality or completely ignores it. The parallel universe of a choice to create a new timeline derives from it. Dark, which plays with the causality extensively, reverses the grandfather paradox. If I go back in time and kill my grandfather, I will not exist. So who killed my grandfather? It makes the past and the future not one for cause and effect, because the past, present and future are intertwined to form a causal loop. The past can affect the future, and the future can affect the past. I believe that the Dark series is fresh, but is it old wine in a new bottle? A VR time machine is not a time machine that can truly transport us through time and space, but rather a time machine that functions like a simulator. The past is everything that has happened, and the future is something that is subject to causality but has not yet occurred. The past represents memory, while the future represents imagination. Imagination is a memory-based prediction. Therefore, a VR time machine can help predict the now. If we want to predict the future, we must first collect all of the data that has occurred and then simulate all possible scenarios, just as stockholders use past stock movements to forecast trends. Here's a simple comparison. Every day, your smartphone backs up your personal information to the cloud. Your phone can now predict whether or not you will go to work tomorrow, give you a weather update, and even recommend you which takeout food you should order. So if you want to implement a VR time machine, you must first back up every major and minor event that occurred in your world, so that you can use the VR time machine to replay life moments and then speculate on future life trajectory. So if you're a fan of Game of Thrones, the three-eyed crow with the world's memory is the realization of a VR time machine. Regardless of how many technical challenges must be overcome, that is the future. If everyone is a three-eyed crow with a global memory and the ability to use Vive and a computer to aid in every life choice and decision, then you have the ability to travel to the future to some extent. At least you'd be able to see every possible situation through VR. In conclusion, it could be said that we all live in virtual reality, but I'd like to go a step further than popular science fiction and introduce you to a philosophical dialectic of the VR world the simulation hypothesis, proposed by contemporary philosopher Nick Bostrom of Oxford University's Future of Humanity Institute. In 2003, Nick Bostrom wrote, Are you living in a computer simulation? A paper that contends that the universe, the earth, humans, and all of reality as we know it are the result of a supercomputer program simulation. This viewpoint is shared by the Matrix movie and its red pill, blue pill dilemma. To test this hypothesis, Nick Bostrom used the real world or virtual world method. In his paper, Nick provided a framework of thinking for his simulation hypothesis stating that at least one of these three possibilities must be correct. One, the human species is very likely to go extinct before reaching a post-human stage. Two, any post-human civilization is extremely unlikely to run a significant number of simulations of their evolutionary history or variations thereof. Three, we are almost certainly living in a computer simulation. This gives rise to the concept of a VR time machine, a virtual reality world simulated by a computer. If you believe that a technological development like that of the three-eyed crow having the memory of the world will eventually happen, then the probability of the first point being true is low. If you believe that it's impossible for humans to resist the desire to use a VR time machine to spy on the past and the future, then the probability of the second point being true is low. Then the truth is the third point, that yes, we are all living in virtual reality.